Hey, what's going on guys? Jay here from EasyBladeShavingProducts.com. Welcome to a new episode of The Owner. Today we're in the heart of NYC, 74th Street in Columbus, and we're visiting the Barbershop Museum. Today we're going to check out Arthur, and we're going to see how he made it to the top of the barber industry. Hey, what's going on guys? Welcome to a new episode of The Owner. Today we are here with Arthur, the owner of the NYC Barber Museum. I'm excited about this interview guys because I used to walk past this place all the time and it's extremely exciting. I'm excited just to be sitting down with you, man. And the first thing I noticed was just the design. You know, all the antiques and stuff like that. How did you even think of that? You know, where did that idea come from? Well, the first idea came from when I lost my father okay. because he always liked vintage stuff and it's not necessarily your barbering tools anything to do with vintage chairs yeah. mirrors yeah and then in 92 or 93 91 to be exact yeah we went to the flea market and he bought some I think it was the the manual clipper okay like the hand ones, yeah school, I'm like yeah. what is that yeah. it was like oh before they put the the, the modems in yeah. it used to be manual okay so to me it was like why buy this garbage like, what is this stuff yeah <laughs> like what are you doing for what yeah he yelled at me he goes like this carries history you don't know maybe one of the presidents were cut by this clippers we don't know wow. Wow. within years you realize that you know our parents are always right mm. when I lost my father all the pieces that he had it became sentimental to me so it came like a history of him yes in 2003 I made myself a promise that one day I will do the museum not just to 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 to, to, to make myself famous yeah. no it's to give respect to the barbering and beauty industry because yeah. we carry history. Absolutely, and it's a history we, that's almost been lost. With, with and I always say it's not just a location. This is this is artistry. Mm -hmm. You know the business. Sometimes customer don't cut his hair for six, seven months. Yeah. Comes in, how would you like your haircut? I don't know. <laughs> you tell me. Yeah. So you have to be creative. You have to give them two, three ideas. Absolutely. And to perform. And the main thing is for him to like it. Sure. Yeah. To me, when customer loves it, it's an accomplishment. But the biggest accomplishment is when he gets compliments. When next time he comes in and says, I went to a restaurant, yeah. people gave me a compliment on your haircut. Yeah, the haircut's like a walking billboard. You know, it's, that's what they say. To me, this is... Uh, the more happy that I get is when I hear customers saying, I had compliments. That's, that's serious. Talking about your father, right? Originally, where are you from? You know, from, I'm, I'm from former Soviet Union, former Soviet Union, which is Uzbekistan now. Mm -hmm. uh, in 1989, that's when the civil war broke out, in uh, Uzbekistan, Tajikistan, Kazakhstan. So they all divided and became separate countries. Okay. We immigrated here right before they split up. In 1989, yeah. I was 14 years old at that time. Uh, my father did not find a job right away because the English, the, the language barrier, yeah. the experience, we never had those tools in Russia. Mm -hmm. The Oster machines, yeah, the wall, yeah. the clippers. What do they use? Man? Scissors. Regular scissors? Scissors Baby over hands. comb and then the outlines used to be with the, with the straight edge. Wow. When we came here, when he saw those tools, he was like, oh my God, it's so easy. But again, you have to adjust to them. Of course. You so your dad was a barber. My grandfather, my grand-grandfather was a barber. Wow. And it's an interesting thing. Uh, my grandfather had five kids. And it was a struggle. Mm -hmm. So when my father was born in 1947, mm -hmm. he said he was 
the last child. My father was the last out of five. Wow. He always said that he brought me luck. Three months after my father was born, he opened up the first barbershop. Wow. And you're not gonna believe what happened afterwards. What happened? In 1974, my father, in 1972, my father got married and he was a regular barber. Yeah. He had a dream that he needs to go out of country mm -hmm. and study more. So what he did, he went Wait, to- Wait, literally, he had a dream. Dream, wow. real dream. Wow. And the dream said that he needs to go out of country and study more about the skills of a barbering and haircuts. Mm -hmm. The city of Fergana, where I'm from, the, the people did not know wash, cut, and blow dry. Mm -hmm. It was dry haircuts. Okay. It was no sinks yeah, yeah. or nothing like that. So when he went to Kiev, they have one of the best barbers in the world, the Ukrainians. Yeah. He brought the wash, cut, and dry wow. to the city of Fergana. So he most likely was probably one of the first people who... <laughs> I was born in 1974. Right. After four months, just like his father opened up a shop after my father was born, right. same happened. Same thing happened to my father. He opened up his own barber shop in 1974, four months after I was born. Wow, <laughs> that's deep. So talking about that, how did you end up becoming a barber? I know you. You know, how, did you start off with him around the shop when you were younger? How did that work out? I'm the only child in the family. Okay. So he was always afraid that something happens, you know. Yeah. So after school, I was going to the barber shop. If I was late for oh, 10... Oh, about anything that happens like when you were a kid, like running around the streets. You, you have to be, yeah. You have to be by being my strict. side. Right. Strict. Okay. He was very strict with me. Okay. So after the school, I used to go direct the barbershop if I, if I was late 10 15 minutes yeah. customers used to drive around looking for me oh, wow. <laughs> literally wow. so what I was doing I was sweeping up the floors washing the hair what age was this I started off at nine nine years old nine years old wow. <laughs> and it was very uh, popular in, uh, in the men's uh, Men used to go every Friday and Saturday not to get a haircut, yeah. just to get a wash and blow dry. Wow. For clubs, to go out. To go out. Like that, yeah. So here in America, we don't experience that. Wow. Guys don't know just to come in and get a wash and a blow dry. Yeah, yeah. Just to they come in to get a haircut or a shave. Exactly. But even now in Russia, they do that. Wow. Friday and Saturday nights, they come in just to, to pamper themselves. It's not necessarily to shave or get a haircut, it's just to get a nice wash with the massage mm -hmm. and just to get a blow dry. Wow. So at nine years old, did you pick up the scissors, the comb? No, did you, no, okay. no. The first time I performed a haircut, I was 14. Oh, wow. That's, I that's was doing the blow too. dry. That's still young. He, yeah. he built me a pedestal. Yeah. It was short. So he built a pedestal out of wood. So I used to go on top of it. Mm -hmm. How were the customers you used to? They love it. They love it. It was right. It was like, look at this they young kid. <laughs> Doing thing. I was untouchable in my school okay. because all the students and yeah. uh, to get into my father's yeah, chair, yeah, yeah. if you cut your hair, yeah. you had to make an appointment right after you're done. Oh, that's smart. Yeah. It's, it's, he did. So he lined them up perfectly. 50 to 70 cuts a day wow. with my mom. Wow. Oh, your mom? My mom. Cut hair my blood. mom is a nail technician. She's a stylist. So this is in your blood. She Correct. does everything. This is like in your she, DNA, yeah. your blood. This is really... Yeah. So talking about school, did you actually go to school? Like, did you finish school? Did you go to college or something? No, like I'm that? a dropout. I, okay. When we came to this country, I went to Forest Hills High School. Okay. We live in Queens, Forest Hills. Mm -hmm. And no, I dropped out. Okay. So it wasn't I for you. Dropped. You just knew. Mm, it's, it's, you know what it is? When you see money, yeah. I think you don't want to yeah. learn. So when you got here, you started cutting hair automatically and going to school? doing it. Mm, no, no, no. Okay. When I went to school, my father started working for uh, somebody. Mm -hmm. In 1991, that's when he opened up his first barbershop in Astoria, Queens. Okay. And his idea, it was an interesting idea. Also, he saw a dream. Yeah. He came out one day, he goes like, Esther, my mom's Esther name. Mm -hmm. I just saw a dream. What kind of dream? Mm -hmm. 
we have to open up barbershops, build them, and sell them to the workers. Wow. This way we're gonna create jobs and help people. Yeah. And it worked. From 91 to, to, to this day, we opened up, I don't even exactly know, but it's close to 40 barbershops. Starting in Queens and then migrating yes. to, to Manhattan? Or? Manhattan, we had it uh, in Brooklyn, we sold the lease, we opened it up right away, somebody wanted it. Mm -hmm. uh, Astoria, Sunnyside, uh, Queens Boulevard and Regal Park, Forest Hills, we had uh, one, two, three, four barbershops. And to him, when he was selling the barbershops, mm -hmm. he always said, if you guys mess up, I want it back. Mm -hmm. Because each barbershop, they my babies. He built it, he built it from scratch. He, he went, he, he, he was very passionate. Mm -hmm. And he always told me, no matter what you do in life, because first I didn't want to become a barber yeah. and I was a jeweler. Oh, you were an years. actual jeweler? Yeah, yeah, oh, I wow. used to design for Tupac Shakur, the star ring. Oh yeah, really, that's, the famous star that, ring? That, that's mine. Oh wow. I wish I knew the patents yeah, and yeah, yeah. The, the trademarks back <laughs> yeah, in the days. Yeah, 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 yeah. Maybe I wouldn't be here. Yeah. So. Uh, Any other celebrities before? Any? Chris Rock. Okay. We have Bruce Willis coming in. I, I'm talking about the barbering. Mm -hmm. Tony Danza comes in. I mean, I don't want to mention all the names. Yeah. yeah. Uh, and what made you stop being a jeweler? What, you, what happened? I don't want to be, be a barber. Okay. I went against the grain. I'm like, I don't want to be a barber. How'd you end up ultimately coming back to the barber industry? I was robbed two times. A robbed? What, as a jeweler? A jeweler. Wow. I had, no, I had my own jewelry store in Queens Boulevard. And within seven months, I was robbed. A lot of stuff? Or? Yeah. Wow. So I'm like, my, my father goes like, barbers don't get robbed that <laughs> often. <laughs> So I do appreciate my father that, uh, yeah. you know, I listened to him. This job saved me a lot of times. Yeah. You know what he used to say? Yeah. A barber can feed his family even in the desert. It's true. Everybody needs a haircut. You can't get a machine. Anywhere you go in the world. You can't get a machine to do it. You can get a job. Yeah, that's true. That's true. So what brought, what brought you to Manhattan though? Like, I mean, you have how many shops in Manhattan now? Four and uh, the so museum total five. Five, five. five shops. What ultimately brought you to Manhattan? Like, because I know the rents are high. And, you know, there's probably a lot of people that dream of opening up in Manhattan. How does that, how does that? Well, when I spoke with few people that wanted finance, mm -hmm. they wanted to open up downtown, somewhere in Tribeca area. Mm -hmm. Then I had one Russian guy invested, he wanted to open up in Midtown. Mm -hmm. I always wanted to bring this to Upper West Side because mm -hmm. my, my career started off in 1999 when my father gave me my first barbershop as a gift Mm -hmm. which is across the street from the museum okay it's 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 my baby yeah yeah i, lo I love upper west side okay. and i love people people love me mm -hmm. and i said to myself why don't i bring this to upper west side because we have a lot of museums here mm -hmm. a lot of tourists yeah, absolutely that makes sense yeah. and the, the place is not that big yeah but it's, it's a lot it's a lot of 700 history. square foot i was history. trying to get bigger place but mm -hmm. the rents are too much money yeah so what we do here is we rotate. Mm -hmm. I have 46 chairs in my collection. Oh, wow. I have 19 barber poles. Wow. And uh, so you rotate the we history? We rotate, yes. So yes. people can see different things yes. every time. Wow. And do you notice the difference between the customers that you have in Manhattan as opposed to Queens? Like, do you feel like it's a higher end customer? Do they pay of more? Of course, yes. And how do you, yes. you, do you yes. get way more money and stuff like that? In the city, yes. And they do, they, they do realize that it has to be more mm -hmm than Queens because the rents are much higher here. Mm -hmm. And then even when I opened this up, I wanted to give extra time to customers, mm -hmm. different experience. Absolutely. We do individual combs for every customer. I give the comb to go. I don't know if you saw that while I was performing a haircut. Okay. In 1999, when I opened the store across the street, I always hated when barbers, and you do remember maybe, they used to use the blade for the neck up okay. to 10, 15 customers. Okay. I hated that. Oh, the same blade you said? Yeah. Oh, wow. Back in the days, yeah, they, yeah, they, I think they, I remember. They, yeah, they, just, yeah. they used to sanitize it yeah, yeah. if they sanitize it. I've heard it, it. Uh, yeah. And they okay. used to reuse it and reuse it, reuse oh, wow, it. Yeah. I didn't like that yeah. because we, we can tr tr transmit the disease. Absolutely. Hepatitis B, yep. HIV, yep. anything. Oh, true. So thanks to Armando mm -hmm. Petrocelli. Okay. That's a family. Oh, yeah, owned, yeah, yeah. I know those guys, yeah, yeah. So I came to him, I said, Armando, why don't you create the bl individual blades? blades? 
And I told you this too. Yeah, yeah. You should do yeah, that too. Yeah, yeah. And it worked. It worked, and uh, now all the barbers using. Gotcha. Yeah, they all switch them up. That's they the have to. Now they're gonna also do individual combs. Yeah. Because the word is spreading around. Mm -hmm. At NYC Barbershop Museum, you go in and you get your own comb. Absolutely. Sterilized. Makes sense. People respect, especially when kids come with mm -hmm. parents. Exactly. Oh, brand new comb. Oh, I love it. Yeah. So what advice would you give to, to barbers out there that want to open up a shop one day? I mean, given that you got all this experience and all these shops, what advice would you give to a guy that's first starting out? First advice when I, when I take a student, yeah. because I also teach, that I do individual classes, mm -hmm. is I ask why you want to become a barber. Yeah. If they tell me, oh, I heard you can make money, no good. don't waste my time. Yeah. If a student tells me, I love this, I want this, then you're welcome to That's become true. a student. The, the main advice is to love what you do. Absolutely. No matter what you do. Everything else will follow. And That's what my father used to say. Don't follow the money. Yeah. Follow the passion. The money will follow Absolutely. you. Absolutely, yeah. That's and right. it's 100% right. Exactly. Now, um, I noticed you have a product brand. What's that about? You have like a shaving products and stuff like that as well, right? Rea, yes, Rea Mir and Co. Uh, I made it in 2007, okay. and it was I was not planning to do it. Me and my family we went on a cruise mm -hmm. once, yeah. and it was a seminar of doctors. Mm -hmm. And my wife goes like, "We have nothing to do. Let's go." Yeah. So we went. It was an interesting lecture, and a lady. She is a PhD. She asked the audience, what's the biggest organ on a human's body? Mm -hmm. One person said lungs, one person said kidneys. Nobody said it's a skin. Oh yeah, that's right. <laughs> I was saying to myself too. I, I so when she started explaining that we can hurt ourselves by taxes, to get toxins into your body through skin, that's when I decided, and I started reading all the labels of yeah. all the products, mm -hmm. harsh detergents, mm -hmm. parabens, uh, sulfates. Mm -hmm. I said to my wife, I said, why don't I create a product for my family? Mm -hmm. And that's what I did first. Mm -hmm. I created, we did eight products. Mm -hmm. I started using at home. My family, my kids, my friends. And then I brought it to the shop. I started test marketing, tried on the customers. Mm -hmm. Seven out of ten like loved it. That's beautiful. I mean, you cannot please everybody. Yeah, of course. Yeah. And people are like, oh, I love your gel. Yeah. I love your living conditioner. It was not easy to produce yeah. because when you go to manufacturing, they have, yeah. you know, the same stuff. So you yeah. have to order a bunch quantity of stuff. Yeah, yeah, to, to, to have a good, a good prices. Mm -hmm. So it was a little bit uh, expensive. Mm -hmm. I found a laboratory in Chicago, mm -hmm. and they started doing, I think, 1,000 units mm -hmm. each. Mm -hmm. Then the traveling, I hate to fly. Yeah. I had a bad experience in my life. So I used to drive there okay. like six times. Mm -hmm. So it was frustrating. And then we found a laboratory in Long Island, Got it. and we just started manufacturing and and right here. Rock and roll. Uh, we rebranded because the, the bottles was a little different mm -hmm. and now we in Saks Fifth Avenue That's awesome. That's and cool. the salon project of Saks Fifth Avenue. That's awesome. So um, what are some of the negatives in the industry? Like, I mean, I know you, you're doing good, you got the shops, everything good. Is there any like things you run into, any problems just being an owner? Because the series is the owner, you know, being an owner is tough. As I know, I used to own a barbershop for over it's a, it's a good, it's a, The downside is that uh, People cannot love one another. Yeah. People get jealous. Yeah. Even your own barber. People sometimes. have two faces. Yeah, even your own They come in as yeah. your friend. Yeah. They work for you a couple of years. They take the numbers, and then they open up yeah, two blocks yeah. or around the corner. That's the problem. Absolutely. Yeah. I hear you. So, any hardships that you run into in this industry? Any kind of hardships you ever ran into? No. No, no, everything's just been kind of smooth because you've been doing it since <laughs> since, yeah. since a baby. <laughs> Beautiful being here with you. I appreciate it. Thank you for having God bless you, man. God bless you as Be well. Um, yeah, man. Any last things you want to say to the people? 
help each other. Life is too short. We have to help one another. And uh, I always tell this, and my wife always tells me, and she's right. She goes like, you always tell this to the people, but you don't follow it yourself. I should consider that. Why God created 24 hours a day? Do you know? No. Eight hours for us to sleep, mm. eight hours for us to work, and the rest of eight hours to educate yourself and help others. There you have it, guys. Jay here from the owner. You heard it from the man himself. When you visit NYC, you're gonna come to 74th Street in Columbus. Come visit the barbershop museum. I will talk to you guys soon. Again, thank you, it was a pleasure. Thank you. Thanks a lot. Thank you.